what's up y'all it's me tasha c and in this particular video y'all i will be reviewing love and hip-hop um um Atlant oops sorry y'all i'm i'm getting to say <laughs> not till next week y'all mm -mm. um love and hip-hop new york season five uh part two reunion okay and the reason why I'm saying that, no, and I don't even know y'all, I might put this video in black and white because this place of <laughs> some shit. I look like a damn pink metal piece of little foil. But anyways, y'all, I'm, I'm way glad this is over. If I have time, whatever, is y'all going to also, but no, don't forget, shout out to my YouTube fam. If you're not from my YouTube fam yet, just go ahead and like, I mean, subscribe and like and share this video, y'all. I'm sorry, it's not like I'm tired, tired. It's just the reunion was... This last part, the few seconds throughout the whole entire goddamn hour, that was, you know, that, that, I mean, that was the side part. It was snippet. It was only two minutes. You combined the snippets together. That was worth watching. Everything else was kind of like, for real, for real. Now, let's get into this part. But like, don't get like to share this video. Let's get into this shit. This fuckery. Everybody's probably over with, uh, over happy, finally over with this ever. But like I said, I might watch on Memorial Day the, um, the wedding between Medici and um, uh, lovely y uh, Yandy. I think they even say season Duchess, whatever. It's supposed to be, and they say it's supposed to be live or something. But if I can watch it in that time, depending on what I'm doing Memorial Day, I will watch it and maybe possibly review that as well, or just you know give a little recap of what I saw. So let's get into it, y'all. Um, I'm gonna go by characters, try to save the best for last, I guess. And first, we're gonna get into this creep mode. Now, in the middle of the episode. They have all the dudes there, and somehow they always have the awkward person that is sitting on the couch has nothing to do with. But I guess they post give their opinion out of the cast. This time was seeing, I you know I don't think she was part of the creep movement. Um, uh, considered supposedly she was creeped on, but not part of creep movement and shit. And apparently, y'all, we had a creep contest, and it was really between Peter, um, Peter Cisco, and also um, who was Rich. And they're competing about who's the worst creep of all. And it's like all three of them, even though they have kind of different situations pertaining to multiple women, or at least two, even though, um, you know, they're all different situations, but all of them lead to like, they, you know, um, creep on black, or, you know, over here, um, 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 drooling their dicks over here, drinks over there. And it's just like almost like a fun game. They even had a hashtag, y'all. Did y'all also vote to see who's the biggest creep? President. Everybody's a president. And the co-founder. I give y'all know you can have more than one co-founder or some shit, but I think they can all be the co-founder if this is about the creep and they got a movement. You know, I'm thinking like shit, they're gonna start making t-shirts, have time to be a creep or something. So they asking Rich how many girls did he cre uh, creep with and it's like he ain't gonna tell, blah blah blah. But the thing is is that in the middle of that they were just talking about this creep moment half test. I just want to get out there way because it was kind of like an, an irrelevant thing to say to speak. I know maybe it was just a filler scene, but it was kind of like, uh, we kind of know these these details. I don't know, you know, if they're going to change their ways, whatever. And like I said, it had Chink on there as well. But I guess his situation is totally different to a certain point. But I mean, he's creeping on him. And Deez's head up there. It was like, kind of like, okay, we ain't trying to get him in trouble or, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, it was like, besides the nice beautiful white teeth i was kind of confused like why he's up there until a certain point you know because chink wasn't up there like giving him creep i'm a creep i'm a creep i'm a creep or whatever you know peter was kind of like uh, i don't know did he like go to creep he was kind of like make it seem like i'm just i'm just like cupid i'm just looking for love and i'm trying to bring love and find love or whatever you know what i'm saying i'm in love with two women so it's kind of like he's a hidden creep i guess is that what we're getting you know um so anyways, y'all, let's, I, I can't, okay, with this, as much love, shout out to Miss Love, Neil, 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 much love from Kentucky would say, I can't, because I couldn't with that scene, but yeah, the next part we're gonna get out the way is Erica Mina and her leaving scene. If you already know, and also I think, um, she did an interview, I think either is James, who also is bad, but close blogger, shout out to her, also reality TV news, um, that's John Taylor's, well, shout out to them as well, they kind of like do, like, some of the upcoming, you know, things coming around the TV, little info and stuff like that, pertaining to Bad Boys Club and even, like, love and hip-hop and all that stuff, right? But both of them have kind of, like, um, said something, you know, you got inference, but I think, but both of them, at least, um, has said something about the fact that I think Andrew Minka has, um, 
apologized to Christy, and I think in a radio interview, about, you know, how she called her basically a pig, you know, the pig from Charlotte's Web and shit, and, you know, or babe, and she is just the, the scum on the earth or whatever, you know, basically just horse manure or whatever the fuck she was calling or whatever, okay? So, um, but, you know, they had her when she was talking, and this part of Rainy Baby, it wasn't like she was really as hostile. It's basically like where she, you know, she's, I think Mona, even though I'm not gonna lie, but, you know, some people can dry and cry, but I did not see no water in the eyes. Maybe I was a little too closely, but she was crying to the point. Mona asked her, also, bitch, better have my money. Um, <laughs> was saying this on the loan of lines. So, Erica, I mean, uh, um, <laughs> a bitch, um, when the, I mean, how is the spirits for you? I mean, why are you leaving? And she's just talking about she's ready to move on, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she asked her, would you be friends with Lisa Rich again? She's saying no. She's like, Barry, we're going to move on. It's so hard to say goodbye. Thank you for the platform. I was lost when I first got there. If it wasn't for you, Mona, also known as bitches, bad have my money, whatever. I would not be the person that I am today. And I have a good platform, but it's time for me to move on. Yeah, I'm not to say if I have the choice, I will not go back to reality TV, which I will be doing, hopefully, and get a spinoff. Hint. Or at least hopefully get on my husband's show, hint, uh, or future husband's show, because they, they, they're they not married yet, okay? I don't think so. At least, I don't know. But, on that note, so we sit here and we got the whole, the, the whole not to say whole stroll, that's not like I say whole stroll, excuse the pun. We got a whole moment of clips to see about the members. And a lot of stuff to remember about Erica was basically her going off somebody. The first day and the second scene that she had that fight with Kim Bella. Um, her always getting into it. It was like all the scenes that they had. Besides that one scene where she's supposed to be singing the music. A lot of it was really about uh, love and violence pretty much. Sex, blood and violence. Because remember. But they added that they never showed the fight y'all noticed. Between her and that chick when she was in doing that makeup line. And the, the person Rich set her up with, because I've got to mention, and I've got a couple of my YouTube uh, YouTubers fans, whatever, had mentioned that as well. Like, not only was she messing with Rich, I mean, she's known to be crippled with something like along the lines. Like, we know to know the possibility that Erica creeps now and then, because when she was with Rich, she was also messing with Rich's other girls that he sent out to see, test to see if she was going to fuck her, and blah, 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 some damn pimp shit. I'm just saying. So, Erica messed with her, and the girl did this so she can get Rich back. Okay, but that didn't go too well. No, it didn't. So, she's basically, like, moving on from that, too. She's, like, wishing Rich well because he's getting too old and stuff like that and getting get about his business. And, yeah. So, she's moving on, and we just see her goodbye, and she's glad that uh, Bow Wow, she wished Bow Wow, even though she meant to say later, I think she meant to, I know she meant to say, in of course, Mona had brought up, like, she wished he would have had her in her life sooner, because she was in an abusive relationship for so long. And he had to think about it like maybe she's pertaining to, and not to bash out, probably a relationship prior that she had to Rich. You know, because Rich was on and off, what, about two seasons or something, at least to our knowledge, right? So, yeah. But like I said, really, like the drunken moment where she was at, uh, what was it, Sins event or something, or Rich event, or, or you know, the liquor, and, you know, almost she hit the mirror and stuff like that. But yeah, other than that, y'all, what the hell did we really accomplish with, um,. This damn, you know, like with this thing, I mean, she was leaving out, but to be honest, if honestly, if Christy would have left and I had a proper moment in the interview where maybe she would have the same ongoing and Jim Jones and a lot of, because half the damn, if you think, think about it, Erica gets this story, there's nothing wrong with that, but if y'all notice, damn near, did anybody from the original cast, like the first one or two, you know, couple seasons stay? You know what I mean? Like the first season, didn't everybody leave? Eventually, over time, did anybody else get in so hard to say goodbye to yesterday type of thing or whatever? Or, no, that's the wrong song. But that's about passing away. My bad. But what I'm saying is nobody else got the, you know, um, goodbye, my friend type of thing, being, I'm sorry that you're leaving type of thing, but I always will remember you. Oh, yeah, that's Sarah McClellan, so I will remember you. Nobody got it does that. Not to say it's no wrong, I'm just saying, like, all original cast members that came to Love and, uh, Love and Hip Hop, the New York, because that's half left. But I don't think nobody else got that thing. I mean, Chrissy and, Jim, uh, Chrissy and Jim Jones did get a spinoff. But at the same time, nobody else stayed. Everybody else, like, once they were gone, they just kind of like, and went. 
That's what I'm saying. Ain't nobody else original on that show that I mean that started. But anyways, so um after that, we got this thing here. Oh my gosh. Let's get into the diamond situation and stuff. Right? No, 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 no. Let's get into I want to get into actually the Yandy situation, Zach and Bell slash Remy, the possible stalker. And of course, they bring up everybody's stage, and they're bringing up the fact that we had, you know, people, Mona did mention like, well, you used to have photos of Remy on your page. People bring up Instagram and stuff like that to prove like, but you used to be saying like, you don't know this girl. And that's kind of like, you know, how I remember ATL, they were kind of saying like the possibility of the whole Rashida Kirk thing is uh, fake because she had pictures with Mary Jane is the one he supposedly was with. Now, I'd say just because she, if she knew it, that didn't mean that he did fuck her. You know, you can know some <laughs> whatever, but I mean, you know, Kirk working with Mary Jane, whatever, but that's another story. But anyways, what I meant to say is, is that they wanted to question like this if this was planned for them to have a storyline because even though despite the Medici's like legal troubles and stuff, they did seem to have the most, you know, regular, not none out of control storyline to a certain point. You know what I mean? So Remy, um, Remy and Yandy, oh gosh, too many damn names. <laughs> I don't know why they just stood up. Remy, Yandy, Kim Bella. Kim Bella's there. And did y'all notice? Mona, now I know Kim Bella probably left the show because, you know, but, uh, um, didn't she kind of leave because I don't think Jules would tell one her own shit any damn way. I, that's why I heard. I think I heard him say himself in the interview. But also this too, y'all. I could have sworn that uh, Nick, uh, no, it was probably um, the host, Nina, whatever, I forgot her name. Isn't her name Nina or George? I, I, I'm not trying to miss her name, but didn't she say, here's some new faces to the show. And I'm thinking like, okay, maybe she just watched season five. Only. Because she said new faces. She said Remy and Kim Bella. And I'm like, ooh, Kim Bella might have been on there for only one season. But she's not a fresh face the way she was kind of saying it. Maybe I misinterpreted. I first thought she was kind of saying it like she didn't know Kim Bella's been on the show before. Like fresh faces. Because she didn't say that in part one or part two. She didn't say to Remy and that guy, or, you know, them got on there. Nobody else got a fresh, you know, fresh face introduction except them two. So that's why I'm thinking like uh, Kim Bella has been on the show before. Okay. So, they're basically talking, and Yandy's saying, like, no, she used to be how she, really, she remembered, she met her two years ago, she was at one event of hers that Yandy's had, and next minute, you know, she see her here, let me take a picture here, can I take a picture with you, can I take a picture over here, so she started appearing, based on what Yandy said, at this event, at this event, at this event, the, uh, tr uh, the picnic, uh, um, Cedar Point, anywhere else it was that she was talking about, that seemed to be where she would be at, okay, um, Chuck E. Cheese, wherever. So, also, that's when Remy was saying at the point, like, you know what, um, you know, I'm the one to introduce you and help you get, like, this extension line, or I helped you get this and stuff like that, and he's like, you just introduced me to the person, you, you know, basically saying, like, she helped her get some of the deals or businesses, whatever, right, so they go arguing back and forth, blah, 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 I think that was the only time they didn't show me a decent smile, nothing like that, but like I said, we're going back to the point, it's like how she felt like Remy's on some stalker shit. And then she said she seen a picture on Instagram that she had, like, um, Medici's arm and stuff like that, whatever. And, of course, she ended, of course, the main thing we brought up is, like, her dressing exactly like Yandy and dyeing her hair like Yandy. And Remy was, trying, was, was explaining, oh, why well, I, I, I don't like you and blah, blah, blah. Not just up here, you know, uh, you know, want to dress and clone you and everything else, but I do admire you and blah, blah, blah. And Yandy's trying to point out that she doesn't feel like she's trying to, like, gain up and get with Medici. She feels like she's trying to be in that circle, but just trying to be on some stalker shit. You know, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to end up getting matching tattoos the same as y'all, too, whatever. Because they were also saying that Homegirl's Instagram was also posted with a bunch of damn, you know, damn picture, you know, pictures or something of Yandy and Medici's. So... I don't know if this is actually true, whatever, because, you know, Yandy still said we just in, but then Kim Bella was basically saying, like, she bad too. It was like, when, when Remy started letting her know, I can help you get this, I help you get this, connect, disconnect. Here, Kim Bella, like, again, like, what, what, you got something to say, blah, 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 then they argue, then stand up, and then Yandy stand up. And Yandy, you know, you got God of security, 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 making sure that nothing goes down, okay? And Yandy's just like this, I'm just standing up, I'm not doing anything. And blah, 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 but that made that big people may interpret like y'all gonna do a jump in, jump in, and y I stop this bitch and you snatch her and snatch her hair up. That's pretty much what it could have been interpreted because she got up when she got up. But she was saying like, which is the instinct of to get up because Kimbella got up. And you know, Yandy's, you know, has had her, had her, you know, had her 
her second her, her child already um second her second child and so she already like this like you know i'm good to go now okay come on <laughs> that's what i took it even though yandy was saying that she wasn't gonna do nothing i you know that's maybe cope i wasn't gonna do nothing too much besides break the bitch nose but i wasn't gonna let y'all know about it i was just trying to be calm as a whole block of run i don't know what she was trying to do but i'm just saying so anyways it is what Remy said at the end of the day. She does respect her or something like that or whatever. Even though she kind of felt offended about the way Yanny's trying to make her appear like a stalker. And she's trying to say no. And Yanny's just like this. You know, I'm just I'm just protecting my circle and everything else. Okay, let's get to the next scene. Okay, hopefully, you know, that stalker shit. If she ain't, I mean, this is real, for real, for real. Hopefully she ain't no stalker shit or whatever. Okay. And Yanny, watch your back. All right. <laughs> if that is true. Because, you know, still. Anyways... So, um, now let's get into, let's go to the, let's go actually to the Terror and Peter situation. And also when they were talking about the creep stuff, they were trying to make it seem Peter was actually not a creep. He just wants to please and love people. And yeah, we'll get to this point connecting with that. Because based on what I gather, even though Amina may go back to Peter because Peter, she admitted that. And because this other dude, or she may cling on to somebody else's shit. Because she's even though this dude is sitting here because people is pointing out, of course, he's gonna point out because even if the guy was single, of course, he's compared and contrasting, even though he said he don't care. It's like, man, that was supposed to be one of my aunts, and you know, the, the threat of possibly another dude being there. Because what he joked about was, wasn't kind of like for, for real, for real. And so, when they're on the stage and they're talking about the situation, and then basically after review, and then Amina says her part, you know, Tara says, I guess he's, I don't know if she directly said it, but she was claiming as if she's done and over with him, right. And then on top of that, Amina's saying that she admits that she still loves and wish she could be with Peter, but he will not change his way, so she's still moving on at, at this current point and still is left. And then here come Ariane. Oh, oh, right. I don't I don't know. I don't want to mispronounce the man's name. But when he comes out there, now, he's supposed to be working on a career. And like I said, they seem like as soon as he sat down, Peter, you know, spelled, you know, had had this, you know, had this, this you know, just kind of like sense, like, you know, the possibility of he ain't, you know, um, digging down Amina again yet. He probably is worried about the fact that she gonna be dicked down already. Because, you know, like I said, um, <laughs> you know, um, you can tell Peter, I ain't bothered. I, I'm straight. I'm I by myself, whatever, blah, blah, It's all good, whatever. And, and, but at the same time, he, his first thing to do was sit down. Um, did he cheat on you? Mina's like, yeah, he he did cheat on me because she was saying because they were saying like you know how you met they met each other when they were really young and they knew each other like thirteen years on and off whatever. I mean he knew her before she knew how to speak English and stuff like that. But like I said, Peter up here you know doing the investigation. Okay, he up there talking about like I said down and cheating. He was just like yeah, and then he let everybody just know and everybody like uh also this dude um uh, was sitting up here talking about he you know what I'm saying that he about to be engaged he married okay. And he's sitting here like, and then, you know, she's married too. So what the heck are you talking about? So is anything between y'all? It was asked to him. He's like, no, we just friends. And then, then a message where Peter was talking about, because Peter's letting him know, like, I let you uh, go ahead and manage her. Go ahead and do that. I don't care about the play, but let me go ahead and keep bringing up some more shit, okay? Because then he also let him know, like, well, why would you joke with something like that? Say you wish the baby was, uh, wish the baby was, uh, um, the baby they had, um, Peter, me and his baby, like, was his. And he's like, oh, I was just joking. Uh, really? Even a drunk mom like that just probably felt it. And then he, he, me, it was like, yeah, he did say that. And he said, well, what happened was, you know, one of them type. I did say that, but that was just a joke or something like that. He was trying to justify it. Like, no, dude, you, I don't know, whatever. And... Then he said he's just going to help because he's um, helping me. But the problem was with Amina is, is that she was so stressed out. You know, there's some people can make good ass music. And you can fill in the blank who y'all are feeling. Some people make better music if they go through heartbreak. Okay. And there are some people, if they end through heartbreak and all that shit, they ain't going to produce no good ass shit. Or, you know, whatever. Or it gets distracted in the creative flow and stuff like that, you know. So, in his case, that's what he was saying, like, with the with the Amina situation. But I guess she's going to be working with him. It's going to be platonic and stuff like that. Even though Peter, you know, says like he's in love with two women still, whatever. And he misses both, both of them, whatever. So even though Mina says she still loves and still wants to be with him, it's kind of like he's still letting on the lines, okay, with that whole circumstance, okay. So it's still a question mark. I guess Amina's still supposed to be working with this dude or whatever. And, you know. But 
like I said, the same when they're doing towards the end of this, uh, end of this, and you got the whole cast on her, you know, everybody on the, on the stage, excluding Erica, who made her interest off, okay. They asked, it was something about, again, Amina started to ask Tara again, would you still let him hit it again if he could? I mean, no, no, no but no, when Mary Tara said, like, I can still sit on it, he, I can still sit on his, sit on it, sit on his face, sit, <laughs> okay, and she's basically like, yeah, I still could, and then, you know, and then I guess she was asking something about Peter, like, well, okay, would you still do that? And he, it wasn't Peter saying something like, nah, I'm good, and stuff like that. But also, the part, remember when Peter, I think it was in between the creeping thing, and he's trying to just, you know, sit here and say, I'm loving two women. And Cisco, this is when Cisco, oh my gosh, one of the times he was getting on some heist, or maybe after when that damn um, thriller Michael Jackson inspired coat, maybe that's what got him really up to it. Because when they talked about the creeps part, for example, he up there talking about some. You know, Peter just, you know, was good. He had two good women in his uh, life that was, uh, he was in love with and stuff like that. So his situation, you know, wasn't as bad as ours. And then Tara was like, that's being selfish. So I get two dudes right. That's being, you know, that's wrong and stuff. And then Amina got nerves, I think, around that time frame. Talking about some, well, to a certain point, I can understand about why, um, you know, uh, you know, to a certain point, it means like he had loved both of us or something like that. He did it out of love or to a certain extent. I understand what he's coming from. Even Tara was like, what the fuck? But okay. Because we, I think they asked what in between also when they're on the stage about Tara feels and still she doesn't feel justified, I guess about, I guess about in the end or something in terms of like, you know, how in the end Peter and Amina's situation just went downhill or whatever, or do you still believe because you know, now now, Amina supposedly don't want him, and she don't want him. But she like, I don't feel just by because in the day, I still had to deal with the fact that not only was he seeing somebody else, got married, had another baby, blah, blah, blah. And, per, you know, and so that's how I have to deal with it. And that's pretty much it. Then you know what? You know, this didn't talk about the career. They didn't promote no singles. This, this, um, they didn't have profit to perform. You know, it's how they kept it away where... You know, when they could have the creep part down, they could have one of the artists at least promote one of their songs. Okay, maybe it's just me. But anyways. So, that's that. Now, the last final part I want to get into the intertwines. The whole Diamond, Steel, the Mama stage, whatever it is. Let's go first. Now, we still have Diamond and the Mama stage. And Johnny, and I think, um, Cisco in the middle. And Rich on the other couch. And um, here they claim to have auto, but the audio they had still doesn't prove whether or not they screwed or they tried to screw in the bathroom and stuff like that. It's because of this reason. When she took my turkey mice off, she was saying something. Hold on, hold on. He's like, well, turn around, something or whatever. But it was still actually just her talking. You didn't hear basically noises of, of them like anybody moaning or nothing like that, you know. I mean, so people, I mean, talk to sense, but that sounds like conversation to me. So, they asked Cisco what he thought about it. And he like, well, you know what? Um, I didn't really, I just heard people talking. And then they're talking about, of course, breaking the bro code and all this other stuff, right? But in between, Rich felt like this type of way. Even though Cisco felt kind of, uh, kind of mad or whatever. Rich was like this, you know. And then we got talked about the relationship that he had with Diamond. I know I'm a little bit off, off the key, whatever. But how he, she got, Diamond also said he was texting her, said, step the games up, you mind. And when I think about the word he said, said the games you mind, it's the same way he came with Erica about came to this game. It's like basically that pussy is almost mine type of thing. Then on top of that, obviously he must have been talking about, and Johnny's heard this stuff before too, because he's like, you know, I'm, but I'm always going to be rich. I'm always going to be, because she started repeating some of the shit she said before he even finished the sentence, okay? And basically she's saying like, you know, that's disrespectful, because you know, that's wrong. That's wrong. And I thought she was going to take, say, take, take it outside and stuff, because you know, <laughs> she's patting that phrase, but shit, I don't blame her. But what I'm saying is, she basically like that was wrong with the heck he did as far as, fuck, you know, fucking the bro code. And basically she felt like he was trying to also be spiteful to her by some of the words he was saying, like, oh, well, I said this, I do what I do, whatever type of thing, right? As far as Simon being, you know thinking that their relationship was more than what the hell it was. But Diamond was trying to say she knew she was wrong, but she was broken, but she claimed she didn't get with Rich because um because of just some you know, to get on some revenge the revenge book. She felt like Rich was there for a ten, uh, you know, for as a friend and stuff like that. But I mean, girl, you kind of was prepared because, you know, you had that fitting dress on, titties on display, okay, and everything else. You kinda did a little most whatever. And he 
and suggests you as a friend to help you um, in some ways by talking about he's trying to bone you in the bathroom. Okay, but that, I'm just saying. And like you said through the text message, who else, what else he said through the text message that we don't know about? Mm -hmm. But I'm going by what we see. But it just seemed like all of a sudden, like I said, we had the Mamo stage. And right prior to them, I think, it be, I think this went before Johnny had left. Because they're talking about, like I said, the situation between, I think this still was Johnny on the stage about, you know, how she was confronting all the girls and all the Johnny thing. And then all of a sudden it got to a point, you know, before then. Now she up there talking about the Cisco now, talking about her daughter's behavior after we had the alleged audio. She said here and still talking about, I have something to say to you, Cisco. And I'm like, you you know what? That finger should be pointed to your daughter. Because Cisco, we already proved it was on some bullshit. But your daughter sat there and embarrassed herself, but she still kind of made it seem like her daughter did not sit here and call her dog or refer to her daughter as a dog. But okay. But at the same time though, she's still up here talking about some um well, um, and, and Cisco, you were wrong for what you did, and you going to get it, and blah, 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 and I ain't going to mind, even right or wrong, I'm always going to be for mine, so blah, 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 and stuff like that, whatever. And it's kind of like, okay, we can understand, you know, you go going to fight each other. So, you know, some, I, I can't, to a certain point, the reason why I'm kind of like this to the circumstances is only because I'm, you know, I can't look for my mother anymore because I don't have children yet. You see what I'm saying? So it's only so much I can say about the thing, but it's like, but still, from a person just in here, just say, I'm always going to be for you regardless of what the heck what you do, you kind of have to be careful how you say that because, like I said, Diamond already did enough just technically disown her child, you know, for the sake of some, of some I mean, love, and, um, and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I could just say, I'm always going to be there for my child, but if you show some bullshit, then, you know, I'm going to call out on some bullshit. Th then that would have been different, but, okay. Mm. So anyways, like I said, her and Johnny started talking, and you know, already, it just seemed like the whole, here's the whole, when Johnny sat there, and her and Burger going to it about the whole rich thing, whatever, right? I don't know what the question got asked. All I know is that Johnny did her exchange words, and Johnny basically like this, like, forget you and that, um, that, yo, uh, fuck you and, you know, whatever, to go back to your extra, your child, or something like that, calling the child basically some extra or something like that. But it's not the first time that we heard Johnny crossing the line because of, if y'all, seen in some of the blogs, whatever, that her, you know how Monice from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood was going rich, right? And they was close, you know, she was going off saying like, fuck you and your offspring or something like that. So Johnny be sometimes taken to the point that doesn't need to be taken last, and then that last part one, the way she said it could have been interpreted like she was just repeating what the hell Diamond already said, okay, or referred to to her baby. But the second time when she called her like, you know, fuck, and you calling your child an extra, then that's when the mama got up, you know, was like, okay, fuck this, this is a whole other thing, and now you're talking about my grandbaby, and then here go Johnny, and Johnny, Johnny already in the previous when they're talking about the creep scene or something, or they, they were, and everybody was agreeing on us, everybody was agreeing with Johnny about something, you know, she was just talking about how that's bullshit or something with the rich thing, we don't even know, know what us, all I know is everybody was crapping, and then she's like, what, does anybody want it, what, what, I'm like, oh, okay, Damn, what's, what, did somebody sneeze? What, what the hell? I'm just saying. I mean, she is a fucking firecracker. So, of course, she ready to go down to security, take her off the damn stage. Damn, mom, you know, throw her to the stage. Because she's like this, basically. I will throw and, uh, well, uh, beat both y'all ass. I don't care what your mom, not fuck both y'all. You know, then they took her off the stage. And they never brought her back. I don't know if they had more behind the scenes. But that was the end of Johnny for the rest of the damn, um, the show because of that. Okay. So... And I think they ended up t uh, taking it, uh, her off there. But like I said, then after that, they asked Rich. He had to run to Cisco. And they were talking about the situation. Like, you know, bro, you broke the bro code and all this other stuff. But here's Cisco, you know, right next, like I said, he got the hyperness from, I think, Johnny around that time. It wasn't before then. Like I said, there was so much going on between that circles. But, uh, but like I said, when Cisco and, Cisco and Rich talked about the possibility, because Diamond and Cisco, uh, Rich is still claiming nothing happened in the bathroom. But... At the same time, Cisco like this. You know what? We ain't gonna do. Did y'all notice how he tried to come for ATL? Um, love him out. Talking about so we ain't gonna do like Stephen Bendino do, where they up there fighting, blah, blah blah, this on this on camera and all. Got to do all this. Whoop de whoop whoop whoop. We gonna handle it in private. We gonna handle it, and you know, we throw both blah blah blah. Not the cameras, not seen, no no whatever. And just darkness, pure darkness, just pure darkness in space. Okay, then we gonna do that shit. Then we gonna party next day with all y'all. I'm gonna pay for all the bottles. Every all ladies get in all free and stuff like that with y'all. Cause you know we from New York. We from New York. We from New York. Just up there, just bam, bam, and just dabbing all everybody. Then I'm thinking like I was confused because the only person I knew was from New York. Honestly, originally, I know that's relevant. 
I don't, I could have sworn it was Peter Guns, and he just going dabbing all the dudes, whatever. And he was just all hype. And then it was another scene where he was hype again uh, towards the end, y'all. Was it the creep part or something like that? And he was hype even on that part. I mean, he's standing up there, whatever. By that time, like I say, he was inspired by the Peter Jack, and it just was getting hype as hell, whatever. And then he sat down. But y'all notice also too that they should have also damn near put in the field and couldn't even put in last episode. What is going on? It's not even talking about what's going on in their lives, whatever. You know what I mean? Past the reunion. And on top of that, what I'm saying is about Cisco, you know, one of the main part of the stories was with the Natasha. And even if she wasn't on there, how's everything going, Natasha? Are you still good? Are you by yourself? Are you still in creep mode? Blah, blah. Where's Rich? He's still in creep mode. How's your liquor doing? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. We know, we did hear towards the end of the goddamn show that Chrissy is still hoping, well, I don't have any words, but, you know, if I can't wait till Chink gets that divorce, then I'll be happy. I can't do the voice like Boris Rock. She is a champ with that. But I was just like, girl, you still now? I thought you said you and him broke up. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then because when your Erica was talking about, they were asking about, do you have any words for Erica? Chrissy said, I ain't got no words for Erica because she going to call me an old hope, whatever, and I got kings, and I can get, you know, 10% off of Denny's or whatever the fuck else she going to say, whatever. So she... But anyways, y'all, sorry, I forgot to delete this. I had caught too many videos on the menu card. But yeah, so she waited for him to board. What, what else the last thing that was stood out? You know, they asked, like, any more words for Erica. But that's about it. I probably even just ran more than what posted, but like I said, as far as like they were versus Erica, but like I said, altogether, nobody had like any updates that kind of was up besides Yandy. I mean, DCs would have like the main updates besides um, nobody else. Um, that's it. I'm sorry. That's all we got, but we're done of season five. They probably be most likely to get season, season six, but I wonder if they're going to like revamp and just do a whole cast especially since erica is leaving and i'm kind of wondering since it's love and hip-hop hollywood only gonna have like males as part of the main cast and you know open credits because i'm kind of confused like rich has been part of it for since the beginning hasn't been here oh he but you know what i forgot to say he's not part of the original like first cast you know what i mean like he's been there since the first season but you know he hasn't been like um, but no, they only put the females on there, but I'm just saying this. Oh, I forgot my, my bad, y'all. I'm just saying everybody original cast actually had left, except Rich. I'm sorry. So y'all gonna be getting on top of this, uh, <laughs> on the top of my head, talking about something. Wait a minute, wasn't Rich a part of the cast? But now part of, like, what I meant to say is, since they only have the women credits on this season, then he was the only one that, um, that stayed, but he wasn't part of, like, the people in the opening thing. He wasn't, because they only list the women, but none of the women stay. I should be clarified. But yeah, you see, I'm bored and trying to make shit up, but yeah, that's it. And um, Yanny announced that, like I said, Mindy and her are getting married, and you know, also known as, they probably got a nice-ass discount, completely sponsored, good shit. If they get in tell by some TV shit, <laughs> whatever, hopefully they get reimbursed or something. And it's supposed to be a special, for Love and Hip Hop, what, live, special, or after, something. But yeah, that's about it. And we're off to Atlanta in the next video. But thank you y'all. I put some weight up pleasant one this weekend. And I gotta watch Black Ink and do that review for the season finale for that. Alright, and y'all take care. But sorry y'all, this is the best I can do. But we really didn't have too much going on again or whatever. But, yeah. <laughs> but any more last words? I mean, yeah, Peter, no, no, like I said, no, nothing else. But anyway, y'all have a good night.